In this video, I will give you a basic introduction to the normal distribution. So the word distribution, distribution means how the data spread out. So we talk about four types of distribution. The first type is symmetric. So we have a histogram. Symmetric means we have the mean, the median and the mode right in the middle and the left. And then on the right hand side and the left hand side, the bars, they look symmetrical. So the first one is symmetric. And then the next one is uniform. So in the previous chapter, we I gave you an intensive discussion and example regarding uniform distribution. So uniform distribution using a histogram, uniform means every bar has the same frequency or every bar has the same height. So in the previous chapter, we consider X as a continuous random variable that follows uniform distribution. So X is defined between A and B. So we have a straight horizontal line between a and b and the probability density function is f of x equals to 1 divided by the maximum b minus the minimum a that is the uniform distribution and then the third type is skewed to the left skewed to the left means we have a long tail on the left and then a peak on the right and then the next type is skewed right skewed to the right means we have a long tail on the right and the peak is on the left so we talk about these four types of distribution in the past and then uh, the uniform distribution i gave you a uh, intensive information regarding uniform distribution. So in this chapter, normal distribution, I am going to pick the first one, symmetric. So symmetric is you have a mean, median, mode right in the middle, and then the left side, uh, the right side are roughly symmetrical. Now I am going to take the symmetric histogram and then bring it over there and then make this large. So now I am no longer using a histogram to draw a symmetric distribution. So instead of using histogram using bars, I would like to use a curve. So look at the pink curve I drew over there. So instead of using bars, I would like to use a curve. So this, this curve is called a bell curve. Okay, because that looks like a bell. And then uh, this distribution is called normal distribution. Before we go into a more detail, normal distribution, what is the meaning of normal? So every time I use the normal, let's say in plain English, I say something is normal, what does that mean to you, normal? So to me, normal means everything runs okay, right? So everything looks fine, looks good. This is how how it is, right? So this is how it is. Everything looks okay, so which is normal. So let's compare the pink curve and the yellow bars. So normal distribution, everything is look, looks good, right? So what, what, what does that mean? So if you look at the bars, we have the mean, the mode, the median right in the middle. If you look at the pink curve, you see that the highest point they are right in the middle. So here is how I interpret normal distribution. So we have the mean, median, and mode right in the middle. What does that mean? The mean is the average, right? So now take this point. The mean is the average. So normal distribution means most of the observation, most of the data. So using the language of the area under the curve, we say that most of the area, they are concentrated right in the middle so let's take a look most of the area they are concentrated right in the middle and that is where the peak is right the peak is right in the middle the tallest place of the mountain is right in the middle so using the area under the curve using this type of language we say that most of the observation or most of the area are concentrated right in the middle so back to um uh, let's say you, you take a test in a class your instructor say all right so the mean of this test is equals to 80 so the mean is equals to 80 what does that mean to you the mean is equals to 80 that is a uh, average right so the mean equals to 80 that means in the whole class most people score around 80 points again the mean equals to 80 means most people score around 80 points all right now look at the skew to the left and skew to the right is the mean right in the middle do you if you still we re re remember the the lesson we talked about we talk about in the past if you don't just go back to visit that, that video i make a video to introduce these four type of uh, distribution and then i gave you a comparison of the mean mode and median in each type of distribution look at the skill left and skill right is the mean right in the middle no so if you look at skill to the left this is 
what the curve looks like, right? Skew to the left and then skew to the right. This is what the curve looks like. The mean is not right in the middle. Skew to the left means we have small observation on the left. The mean is being pulled to the left. Skew to the right, we have big observation on the right. The mean is pulled away from the center. Again, skew to the left, we have small values on the left. The mean is being pulled away by the small value. So the mean is no longer in the center. We use the median as the center. Skew to the right, same thing. We have big values on the right. The mean is no longer on the right. The mean is being pulled to the right. So the center is the median. All right. So skew to the left and skew to the right. The mean, they are not on the right. But for symmetric and uniform distribution, we have the mean right in the middle. That means most of the people are right in the middle. So if the score follows normal distribution and mean equals to 80, then we say that most people score around 80 points. So that is normal, right? Most people score around 80 points. So if you look at the graph and then plug in the mean equals to 80, we say that most people, the tallest bars, they are right in the middle. That means those bars, they, those classes, they have the highest frequency. That means most people score around that many points. So that is normal distribution. And then before before we move on to the next graph, so take a look at uniform distribution again. So do you see that there is a purple horizontal line? So that horizontal line can be described as a probability distribution function. f of x equals to 1 divided by b minus a is a simple function, right? So the, unif the normal distribution has a bell curve. This bell curve can be described as a function and the function is so much more complicated compared to the uniform distribution. Before we introduce the function of this bell curve, I have to review this symbol. So we have one a set for population, a set for sample. First of all, the mu. Do you see on, on the left hand side, the mu, the mu is the mean, right? Mean is mu, it's a Greek letter, we call it mu, mu. So the mean stands, mu stands for the mean, and then the population variance, we use sigma square, sigma is also a Greek letter. And then for standard deviation, we take the square root of variance, then we have sigma. On the sample, the mean, we use x bar, so in statistics, every time you put a bar on top of a variable, the bar stands for average, which is the mean. And then variance, we use S square and then standard deviation, we use S. So you will, we will have to use these symbols over and over again in the future lessons. All right, so these six symbols, we will be using them over and over again in the future lessons. Now is the time to give you the probability density function or the probability distribution function of normal distribution. So the graph is right over here. So we have a bell curve and this bell curve is normal distribution. So since we have a curve just like uniform distribution, there is a probability distribution function, PDF. So this probability distribution is way more complicated. So this is f of x equals to 1 divided by sigma times square root of 2 pi and then times base e raised to uh, some, some power, right? So the PDF is so much more complicated. Do you need to memorize the PDF? So let me tell you the answer. In elementary statistics, you do not need to memorize the PDF. Every time I say normal distribution, one thing should pops up in your mind that is the bell curve. So let, let, let's do this. Normal distribution in your brain. Draw the bell curve for me. Let's do this again. Normal distribution in your mind, you have a bell curve. And then what else should you know in, in that bell curve? So you should know that the bell curve, the mu is right in the middle, mean, right? Mean is the center, right in the middle. And then what about the sigma? The sigma is standard deviation that describes the spread of the curve. So if you take stay right in the middle, so do you see the purple line right in the middle? We have a mu and then you add a standard deviation to the right and then you subtract a standard deviation to the left, then you catch some area, right? So that is how the standard deviation works. Standard deviation is the spread. And then what is the total area under the bell curve? The answer is 100% just like uniform distribution. So in this probability density function, oh, there are there are a few different names so PDF other than probability distribution function. Some people call this probability density function. 
And other than density, so this is also called PDF. In some textbook, they don't use the word density, they use the word mass. Mass, probability mass function, PMF, but they mean the same thing. I, in elementary statistics, I don't think the textbook will use P, PMF. So either they use density function or they use a distribution function, but they are pretty much the same thing. All right. So the random variable, the X, X follows x is a random variable that follows normal distribution so this is how we do use the language so take a look at here so x follows the big n stands for normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma so x is a random variable the mu the sigma the sigma square they are called parameters why do they call parameters because they determine the shape and the center of the bell curve again x is a random variable that follows normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. The mu, sigma, sigma square, they are called parameters. Why do we use the word parameters? Because they determine the center and the spread of the curve. So we ha I have four, three curves for you. So the first one, I have mu equals to four, sigma equals to two. And then let's compare the first one and the second one. So the first one and the second one, the mu, they are equals to four, right? And then the only difference is they have a different sigma. So when the sigma is different, how does that affect the graph? So here is how. So when the sigma is 2 versus the sigma equals to 0 0.5, sigma equals to 2 is a biggest sigma or biggest standard deviation. 0.5 is a smaller standard deviation. So we are talking about a bigger spread versus a smaller spread. So what is spread means? Spread. This is that means distribution. What is spread means? Spread means how the graph spread out. So when sigma is equals to 2, you start at 4 right in the middle. Look at the first graph. You start right in the middle. You take two steps away to the left, two steps away to the right. Then you build some spread, right? Then you see the spread of the bell curve. And then on the orange one, so do you see that you have the mean 4 right in the middle? You take 0.5 step to the left and 0.5 step to the right. So since the sigma is so much smaller, that means the graph is steeper and taller, right? Can you see the difference? First one, bigger spread, the graph is more spread out. Second one, smaller spread, the graph is less spread out, the graph is more is taller. The first one, the graph, the spread is bigger, then the graph is shorter. So the mu, what about the mu? The mu determines the center of the of the mountain or the center of the belt. So if you use a smaller sigma, then you have a smaller spread. So the graph is less spread out, you get a taller graph. Let's compare the second graph and the third graph. So the second graph and the third graph, we have the same sigma. They are both at 0 0.5. So do you see that they are equally tall? They are they ha they have the same spread and they have the same height. So but what is the difference? The difference is the second graph mu is equals to 4, the third graph mu is equals to 1. So when you change the mu, then you shift the center. So change the mu, you shift the center. That doesn't change the spread. If you change the spread, that change the graph. Either the graph is so spread out or it's not so spread out. So that's why we call them parameters because they determine the center and the spread of the curve. So again, if you change the sigma, you change the, the mean, that means you change the center. You shift the center left and right, left and right, left and right. If you change the sigma, then you either get a very wide spread out graph, which is a shorter graph, versus a small sigma, you get a very steep graph, which is a short mountain versus tall mountain. So that's the smallest, that's, that's the easiest language that we can use right here. Either a short mountain, which is a big spread, big spread short mountain, small sigma, versus a high mountain, a height, a tall belt, which is small sigma. All right. So that is the basic introduction to normal distribution and its graph. Uh, in the next in the next video, I will talk about the empirical rule of this bell curve. So uh, if you think my instruction is helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Please subscribe and share my videos out. I appreciate your help. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing out.